I made my first quad a Speedy BF405 V3 Gep RC Rad Mini 1 Watt VTX. I had a USB OTG 5.8G receiver, but not good picture quality. Yeah, no, those OTG receivers are terrible. Should I buy 5.8G goggles or go digital? I mean, go digital. Like, if, if you have the budget to go digital, most people are going to be happiest going digital, right? Most people who stay with analog uh, don't have the budget for digital or that that's or pr pretty much it. They don't have the budget. Like, it's not entirely, but like a lot. Um, DJI is tempting, but way too expensive. Oh, well, there you go. If you don't have the budget, I mean, like all of the digital systems are about the same price. Like the goggles, the goggles could be maybe a, a two hundred dollar swing in the price of the goggles. Um, but the thing about the goggles is you buy once, right? So let's say you pay two or three hundred dollars more for the for your goggles. Well, how many video transmitters are you going to buy, right? The price difference of the goggles is basically one or two video transmitters, which over the life of the system. Like, it's probably negligible. I don't know. If you're going to buy one set of goggles and build one drone and fly that same drone for the next four years, then that's not... But that's not how most people operate. So if DJI is too expensive, then probably Walksdale and HD0 are also too expensive, and you should stick with analog and get a good set of 5.8 gigahertz goggles. Zeleus asks, would you recommend the Flywheel Explorer LR4 with Walksnail for a beginner? Is it sub-250 with the Flywheel Lithium-Ion Pack 18654S3000? Thank you for $5, Zeleus. Um, I don't recommend the Explorer for a beginner. The Explorer LR4 is a lightweight, long range. It's not designed to crash hard. And I think it's going to have durability issues uh, for a beginner. The FR4 is a little bit more durable. And it's designed a little bit more for... Uh, but still, the frame is basically the same. It's just a little more powerful. Um, I don't think that's a great choice. I actually uh, ran... Is it the FR4? Flywu FR... No, which one is it? Oh, I can't remember the model name. But I, in short, I think I would not get that one. I would get a more durable quadcopter uh, for a beginner. Uh, it is not sub 250 with a 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion. Uh, if my memory is correct, it can be sub 250 or it can have the long range pack, but not both, which is, I remember being a little annoyed about that when I reviewed it because I was like, well, that's, it's supposed to be a sub 250 long range, but it's sub 250 or long range, but not both. Going on to tree trimmer. Um, well, the number one thing that causes this tree trimmer FPV is having the wrong power values loaded in your VTX table. So if we go in to Betaflight, ooh, look, I got Betaflight Configurator 10.10.0. I've been testing, oh, look, Betaflight 4.5. I'm testing out 4.5. If we go to the Video Transmitter tab, fuck. <sighs> Sorry, hold on. If we go to the Video Transmitter tab, we got to load in a, dang damn it. Let me load in a, a VTX table. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay, video transmitter. So these power values right here, this is what can really screw you up. Let me zoom in here. These labels here could be anything. It doesn't matter. Those are just text strings that are shown on screen to tell you what power level you're at. The only requirement is that they are no more than three characters. That's all Betaflight cares about. So we could just write 25, 50, 100, 200 milliwatt, meaning milliwatts 
one watt plus min mead max most wow okay these labels are just what's displayed when the power level is loaded and the reason i tell you that is well number one like you should know that they're just completely dissociated from any functional thing. Sometimes people are like, well, my my video transmit, my, my flight controller says I'm at one watt. Yeah, big deal. It could say you're at wow. It doesn't matter, okay? That's just a text string. What matters is these values here, the power levels, okay? And those power levels have to be correct for the video transmitter. Now, some video transmitters want the power levels to go zero, one, two, three, four, four, whatever, five, six, seven. And then some of them work a little differently depending on uh, which version of smart audio the video transmitter supports. One second. So some of them will do uh, the power level in DBM instead of like just an index. Zero, one, two, three, four, five is just an index number. Uh, some of them want the power level to be in DBM, 14 DBM, 20 DBM, 27 DBM, 36 DBM, okay? And the point is that if your VTX table has a power value that the video transmitter doesn't recognize or expect, then the video transmitter will lock itself to 25 milliwatts just for safety. It'll lock itself to the lowest power level. Some of them will go into pit mode, I think, or one milliwatt, but mostly they'll go to 25 milliwatts. So my guess is that you have the wrong power values in your VTX table, and that's why the VTXs are locking themselves at 25 milliwatts. Oof. A simulation says I have a new six cell battery, but cell number six isn't showing up at all. Should I troubleshoot it or should I dispose of it? Uh, uh, if the if if the battery if the cell is dead, or the battery is internally damaged such that the sixth cell doesn't showing up, you a hundred percent should dis discard that battery. Some people would say you can remove that cell and rewire the battery to make a five cell. I don't personally think that's worth the time and, and effort and risk, but. I do want to acknowledge that that is a thing that some people do. If the cell is, I mean, like I would want to make sure that it wasn't like my charger or my battery checker that is messed up. But if it's actually the battery that's messed up, I'm sorry. It's just, I would just get rid of it. So 